All right, welcome back, uh, Rhythmia Community. It's that weekly segment. I got my miracle, but this week a special one. I got my miracle through breath work. And we're just gonna hang out a minute or so because we always wait for some people to show up. And um, on the Rhythmia page, make sure everything is good for, oh, there's our first person, Jennifer. Hi, when you come on, go ahead and type in where you're from, let us know. Um, I got Susan Byrne here this week. Uh, she was, just went through the program. And Karen, hi Karen. And Susan from California, great. We're both from California here too. Karen Perry, welcome. 12 people on, 16, I usually wait till we get to about 50. Just so you know, okay. <laughs> Here we go. 20, and uh, this gives us a chance to just say hi to folks here. I hope, I don't know if it's coming through here, but I just came from our spa, so I'm like soaking wet. Um, it's, uh, we got a great sauna here. Did you use the sauna this I week? Didn't use the sauna. Oh, man. All right. So, um, Nicole Rager, hey, Nicole is here. Hi, Nicole. Where are you now, Nicole? She's traveling. She was uh, the breathwork uh, person here um, before me and then with me for a little while. Now she's traveling all over the United States. Welcome, Nicole. Welcome, Karen. Welcome, Linda. Welcome. Who else is down there? All right. Candice or Candice. We say Candice because we have a Candice here. Uh, and she likes it pronounced that way, so. All right, 36, 39, welcome, welcome. You can give us hearts and likes if, uh, if that helps. Um, I'll, I'll just uh, say a few things. Normally this is a segment that Jerry Powell, our CEO, delivers. Uh, however, this, this week was a special week, a breathwork week, and he, um, he lets me take over because I'm pretty much uh, in charge during this breathwork uh, segment here. Uh, we put together a program that allows people to experience the whole rhythmic experience uh, minus the plant medicine part. Uh, so this is for people who have either can't do plant medicine because they have medical reasons or they have physical reasons, uh, people who aren't really sure they uh, can do plant medicine or people who had no other opportunity. <laughs> this was their window of time, which, uh, which we'll talk about in a minute. Just saying hi, Gindy, say from Arkansas. Um, let's see, anybody else? I don't know why sometimes it doesn't. Nicole, you are in currently Boulder, Colorado. Oh, beautiful. Estes Park with Nora. Oh, beautiful. Nora also works here, and uh, Boulder's where I was from. So. Uh, before California, so I'm glad that you're there. It's a great, great place. Get go hike the flat irons if um, get the chance. 44, 45. Here we go. Who else is there? Orlando, Florida. Ella, Tim. Hey, Tim, joining on. All right, 49, and we're almost there. Let's see. Oh man, I hit it when it gets to 49, and then it goes down again. Uh, we're getting up. All right. I'm just going to get started here then. Welcome officially to uh, I Got My Miracle. This is the Breathwork Edition. I got my miracle through Breathwork this week. We, we, uh, I'm Christian, Christian Minson, filling in for Jerry Powell this week. Uh, I led people through the Breathwork Week here, a week of Rhythmia experience, minus the plant medicine, but... Uh, fully on board with the breath medicine. We do breath work ceremonies every night of the week, and uh, as we always get reports, uh, the breath, for people who have done both, the breath is equally as powerful, and in some cases even more powerful than the plant medicine. So today, um, uh, we have Sur Susan Byrne here from from California, from San Francisco, right? Yes, yeah. San Francisco. And uh, she just went through the program. And basically, I'd like to start by uh, um, how, how you 
sort of chose Breathwork Week because it wasn't <laughs> fully a choice, right? No, it was not fully a choice. Um, I was looking for ayahuasca. Um, I, I've been working on a lot of issues through therapy and through meditation and had this one window of time where I could take some time to myself and some things had cleared up for me and I said I want to mainstream my problems and just push them through and do ayahuasca and but yet this was the only week that I had available and it was breathwork week but I've heard great things about Rhythmia. So I was like, all right, I'm going. I'm gonna go. I've heard great things about breath work, um, and that will be my choice. Um, awesome. So I was a little dubious coming in initially. I was, I have to admit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, which is, you know, which is probably par for the course for a lot. Mm -hmm. In fact, I know a lot of people seem to really know. It, it's funny that uh, the, the breath medicine is something that we've had with us since the beginning of life, basically. Uh, but more people seem to know about plant medicine. Then they come to Rhythmia and they actually get to experience the breath work and that's where they find um, uh, that it can be just as powerful. Now for you, do you, do you feel like uh, now having been dubious, uh, are you a believer? <laughs> I'm definitely a believer in breath work. I am positively a believer. Um, and it, it, and the, the program is structured in such a way to allow you to take control of your process and gives you tools to work with in the breath work. Um, and the whole program was extremely powerful in moving through issues by helping identify emotions. And I found that the breath was a powerful excavator. Um, and uh, the, the instructions and intention setting, the classes were all designed to really support that process. Um, and so that was very unexpected too. I, I, you know, I had wanted to be hit over the head by the plant, you know, yeah. you know it was gonna hurt and have all kinds of revelations and, you know, that, that, that it's going to make it happen. Um, whereas I had to use the tools available to make it happen, but the, but the breath is powerful and the method works. Excellent. Excellent. Mm -hmm. That, and that's a great testimony because, uh, I mean, here are you, uh, it was neither a medical reason nor uh, a physical reason nor were you scared of the plant medicine It was just your window of time you could get away mm -hmm. and, and you took the chance um, Based on recommendations and otherwise and, and research and arrhythmia. Mm -hmm. I love how you say it too The the whole program really supported your your journey. Uh, we had uh, a guest on in fact I interviewed her the other a uh, couple weeks ago who who came during plant medicine week but didn't participate in the plant medicine? Uh, she didn't want to, and uh, and that was really her outcome too. She had an amazing time, and it was it was based on all we, we went over the classes, but you know, give some of the the elements that were uh, that were you know life changing for you as far as the the, the structure of rhythm. Yeah. Well, what was particularly noteworthy is when you asked me to do this interview, I was initially filled with anxiety. Um, filled with anxiety and all these thoughts of, oh, you know, what if I don't have anything interesting to say? What if I can't organize my thoughts? How could my thoughts be useful to anyone? And as I took pause, this little voice popped into my head to replace that previous voice and said, anxiety and excitement are perceived in your brain as the same thing and it's your perception that changes it and that creates your reality um, and so I said lesson number one and oh my god I'm able to immediately apply it and that is such a different process than I had gone through before I arrived here I, I don't think that the me that came here initially would have decided to do the but it was replacing those thoughts and those thoughts of judgment um, with, uh, wait a second, who says you, you can't? Me? Well, no, I don't want that thought. I'm going to replace that with a different thought. I'm, I'm a new person, and there are pieces and parts and elements of my new heart that I've discovered through one breathwork session that have said you should express yourself and that you should show your wisdom and that you have a heart that is full and open. And 
I said, okay, this is what it means, and I can take my new heart out for a test drive. Here we go. <laughs> right. So, uh, yeah, so, so that was substantial. Excellent. So, so if we were to really say what was the miracle that you got here this week, how would you describe that? Um, well, I mean, that's definitely a, a miracle, the, sh the shift in, in my thought process, because that I can immediately practice and begin to apply to everything. Um, the merging with my soul uh, is, a, is a touchstone. Um, and I, I think having that wisdom combined with the ability to uh, activate behavioral change is a miracle. So those two really work hand in hand. Um, and I'm doing it right now. <laughs> That's it. It's an action. <laughs> in action. In action. Here. Are, uh, uh, this is great. Uh, so, um, give a little bit of of your process. How did you know? I mean, did you feel resistance to going in any of the sessions? What what occurred in any of the breathwork sessions that that shifted? Um, anything significant that shifted? Um, I had no resistance. I was extremely excited. Mm. Um, I'm, uh, I'm a movement instructor, and I was thrilled to also be learning a tool that I could apply to my life and take it off off the mat and out of out of the ceremony and into my everyday life as opposed to plant medicine. Um, so you no, know, I, I was very willing, and um, and the, the ceremonies were structured in such a way that. You, guided us through the process, you and the facilitators, um, between body palpations and uh, affirmations really helped me connect with emotions. And it was a connecting with emotions that was substantial because it's not something that you can afford to do in your everyday life very often. Mm -hmm. For most people, you can't just unearth some grief and, and feel it and move it through your body. Mm -hmm. under, uh, and, and even if you can, a lot of times it's lacking in understanding um, and I found that through ceremony there was the layer of understanding when you mean understanding but um, well pre-ceremony the process of setting intentions and um, asking questions like for example you asked during um, you know my heart um, what would a healed heart look like to you and so to me as I previously said uh, a few other things uh, that it would be softer or more spacious um, all those things I was able to guide my experience a bit and also at the end know that I had attained that hmm. the feeling of change does that answer your question so like a clarity of, of direction you had mm -hmm. that then uh, got you on the path to fulfilling that more direction. of a, re a resolution mm -hmm. rather than talk therapy um, and I arrived at that conclusion on my own. Um, and things just filter out from your subconscious, too, you know. And so that was very interesting and unexpected because you can't very well control what pops up for you. Mm -hmm. um, and that and then the pieces came together and made sense. Um, and so it was a, a very solid structure to allow that process to occur. Excellent. So um, as... Uh, now, as things bubbled up, as you became aware of emotions, and, and did you feel any uh, reticence to express them, or did were you just like go for it all the way through? You were. I was pretty good for it all the way through. This is what you uh, came for. Yeah, I was overjoyed to be feeling emotions and unearthing um, grief and uh, regret and things that had just been lodged. In, in my body, gosh, in my psyche, things that I that I didn't want to carry with me anymore and that were in, impeding my growth and my creativity and my ability to learn. Um, I, I felt extremely congested when I arrived. Um, congested in? Just what? like emotionally congested. Mm -hmm. Just I mean, I meant whole. But <laughs> really, my, my, whole, my whole spirit felt congested um, and, um, and unable to express itself. Mm. Yeah. Now you speak the language very well. Uh, did was this? Were you aware of these kind of concepts before you came here? As far as like you know that the energy is backed up. That as you hold on to emotions, they're uh, 
they, you know, there is a sense of emotional congestion and that, and that that affects the way that you operate, the way that you um, perceive the world, the choices you make. It, was this something you, you understood coming in here? or I did understand it coming in here. I did. And, um, and I understood it. And I think because I understood it, it's why I was able to survive so long without falling apart before I came in here. <laughs> because, <laughs> I, because I had to manage myself. So I, I had been working very diligently on, on holding all my shit together and holding my life together. And, mm -hmm. and it desperately needed to come to a place where I could let it out and examine it and move through it and work through it because I didn't have a space for that in my life. Um, and it was a tremendous gift that I was able to give myself um, to uh, allow a form for that to happen. So, yes, I have been doing a lot of work on it, but, you know. Yeah. And then, uh, so, um, do you feel, uh, what, is there any particular emotions that came out or any a particular segment, uh, session that, that was especially poignant for you? Big revelation or otherwise. Do you want me to tell the words of my soul story? Sure. <laughs> All right, I'll try and tell it as quickly as I can. Um, I had a very, very unexpected merge with my soul experience. Um, 16 years ago, I think I'll start with this story. 16 years ago, I broke my neck in a motorcycle accident and I was paralyzed from the neck down. I was a quadriplegic and had to battle my way through that, six months in a halo, three months in acute spinal cord rehab, learn to walk again, that whole thing. And uh, surprisingly, I remained fairly optimistic and in decent spirits and soldier forward. And people would say to me, how did you manage to, to get through that when you, um, and during the parts when you weren't moving at all? And I said, there was this, there was this part of me that was stripped so completely raw and bare and, uh, and during one of, during the uh, merge with my soul, my journey took me right back to that place where I was in complete and absolute surrender and had no identity at all because I was no one's mother, I was no one's daughter, I was no one's friend, I was no one's social coordinator, I didn't drive a red car, I was just Susan. And I had a vision of that little, five-year-old Susan buying tomato plants with my dad, but, you know, it took me right back there. And the that was the extremely the rest took, took me there and all unexpected places. I mean, I never thought that I would go back to that place or back to that place as, as a pearl of wisdom and a place of power. Mm. Um, so that was really transformative and a substantial experience. Yeah. So as it brought you back there, what did that really, I mean, what was the pearl of wisdom that came out of, of returning to this little season? I have all I need. Mm. I have it. It's there. It's there for me. Um, I, I, I just have to make sure that I don't let it get too dusty. <laughs> 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 to make sure that I diligently work to excavate it. Um, because this is the beginning, the beginning of work. It's going to require mindfulness to maintain, to maintain these changes. Um, but they came more readily. Uh, the, the answers are coming. Uh, yeah. well. And um, so just for those of you out there who don't know what we're talking about when we're talking about merge your soul and heal your heart and all that, in the Rhythmia program is sort of a triad of intention, which is really our, our foundation for the, the miracles here, which is first, uh, show me who I become, uh, merge me with my soul at all costs, and heal my heart. And in that, the program is shaped, and in the breathwork program as well, we we utilize those and uh, uh, those intentions. And in fact, one thing that we do a little bit more or extra, I'd say, is that we actually have guided visualizations around those uh, those intentions that uh, we don't have even in the plant ceremonies. So uh, any you know in those in those guided visualizations every night, were there any that that really took you on a journey or, or that you felt like opened you up? Well, the Heal My Heart, um, the heart surgery, mm -hmm. literally 
pulling your broken heart out of your chest, examining it, healing it, repairing it, and replacing it. Um, that resonated with me most definitely. Uh -huh. So that brought uh, that brought some heart healing to you. And then how did that heart healing manifest? Like what it tangibly for you, what did that look like? Well, the some of the items that I listed is what it would look like uh, were having a more spacious heart. And I've been feeling that shift already. When I arrived here, I didn't want to talk to anyone. I didn't want to develop any new relationships. I didn't want any energy coming in. You know, of that I was full. And I'm not feeling that way now. I'm feeling as if there's room for room for new connections and, uh, and room to express myself as well because I didn't want to, because I didn't want any energy coming in, I wasn't putting out any. Um, and that was okay. It's what I needed to do to protect myself and to hold it together and stay where I was, but I'm not feeling that way now. Um, which is why I'm here doing this interview because that's a component of healing my heart, <laughs> uh, um, uh, along with self-expression and uh, as I, you know, the bullet points that I mentioned at the beginning of the interview. Yeah, beautiful. So, um, what do you feel like you have to take with you? As you mentioned, you don't want to. You need to keep it. Keep your heart, keep your, your soul from getting dusty. Uh -huh. And uh, what what do you feel like you've learned here that you can you can take with you and continue to utilize in your life? Well, for starters, through the workshop, um, I received some really valuable tools in managing my headspace. Um, and and because they're coupled with the breath work, they stick in a way that's different from reading the self help book. Now, was that the or matrix, talk, uh, uh, workshop? Paolo. Paolo, the yeah, answer is the you. Answer is you. Okay. It was very powerful for me. So just so you know, we have uh, classes throughout the week on uh, Michael Beckwith, Reverend Michael Beckwith's work, The Answer is You, uh, led by one of our uh, practitioners here, Paola Castro, and she's fabulous, and the, the, the work is fabulous, and mm -hmm. of course that it, it touched you on some level. Yeah, it, it, it made a substantial impact. Um, and the fact that I was able to pull those tools out of my toolbox. Um, and, and that was a great surprise to me, too. I'm like, oh, I've got it here. There are the answers, and I can do it, and I can start practicing now. Um, so, I, I lost, was there another part of that question? Uh, just in terms of what, <laughs> what tools you're taking oh, home with you to, that you feel like will keep you on track. Mm -hmm. That's a big one. And, uh, the ability to identify thoughts. And it's hard to identify thoughts when you can't find the emotion to go with it. And, and so I am feeling as if I'm far more able to access my emotions. And because I, they've, I've been feeling them and they've been moving through me all week, they're, they're not big and scary and they're not going to t take me over or take me down, you know? Um, and so I can hold them lightly, examine them a little, and, and think about them. Okay, well, what do I need to do with this? Uh, and how can this serve me or not serve me? Um, which I don't think that I could do when they arrived. Um, that's beautiful. And that's, that's exactly where I hope most people arrive with it in context of having a relationship with their emotions. We, uh, uh, a lot of, as I was saying, you speak the language, so to speak, a lot of philosophy is that we hold on to these emotional experiences. And as we do so, they, they don't go away, they just keep reemerging in, uh, as Freud said, Sigmund Freud, darker and uglier ways. So in our lives, we, we keep getting influenced by these uh, emotions unless we actually bring them up for, for introspection, for review, let ourselves express those energies and, and, then, uh, and not let the emotions control you I also say not really control the emotions either. So there's this fine middle line that we're really walking that uh, you know, where the emotions aren't controlling us, we're not controlling them, but we're in this fine balance of, of their energy. So, yeah. So um, uh, how about the breathing, the, the, the breath itself? Do you feel like that's something that is doable at home, something that you can continue to practice and utilize as a, 
as a tool for for helping you as emotions arise or any other time in your in your day to day life? Uh, definitely, definitely. I mean, I, and I think that even with just a, a ten day a ten minute practice, uh, it's just like muscle memory that that I'll be able to at least diffuse some emotions and move them through with the breath work. I would definitely do that. Yeah. I, I feel as if that's another tool that I have, of course. Now, you, you're you a fitness instructor, Pilates mm -hmm. is specific, right? And uh, um, so you do, you, you know how to breathe there. Mm -hmm. Any any comparisons or contrasts between, you know, what you learned here, um, breathing-wise, versus what you, uh, you know, what you know to do or what you had been mm -hmm. doing? That's a good question. This is completely different breathing. Because of course, in Pilates, you're trying to keep the core engaged the entire time, so you never breathe into your stomach. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so, so that was contrary. But I mean, I I, I knew that that was going to be the case. Pilates is accordion breathing, mm -hmm. so you're expanding into the side and back of the rib cage, um, as opposed to down into the abdominals. Mm -hmm. um, so, but, but I got over that very quickly. I, I practiced yoga for years too, and so you know. What, being able to breathe into the recesses of your pelvic bowl is a kind of a new thing for me, though, too. Yeah, and, that, and, and by our philosophy, that's where a lot of our emotions are stored. And, and by not breathing there, we, um, you know, or at least not breathing there some of the time, we're not accessing that energy, and therefore it stays, stays there and stagnant. Mm -hmm. but, uh, um, but you felt like uh, even though you had this way of breathing uh, with the Pilates instruction that, that you were able to access this way of breathing and it wasn't uh, wasn't too much and didn't have too much mental conflict over it. No, not at all. No. I, I followed instructions. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have it's to like, say, I'll do whatever you say. Yeah, you, know, you are a good instructor <laughs> follow this week. And I think the, the results uh, attest to that. Uh, uh, you know, on some level. And that's not to say that we can't have resistance, and uh, a lot of people do, and this is this is our process a lot of times, but it's that uh, it's that resistance that causes the pain in life, really, and uh, our, our job here at Rydney is to, to help you get past that resistance, and uh, so with you, our job is a little bit easier. <laughs> didn't have so much resistance I was like, you know, do what you say, whatever. Yeah. Right. And I think it speaks speaks highly of that. Um, to me, the, the philosophy that breath is, you know, that we have many ways that we can breathe. And the, the particular technique that we have here is, is a, a profound technique for accessing emotions, emotional integration, and actually also spiritual connection. And, uh, and there's other ways of breathing that are good for other things, like um, like physical exertion and, and such. And so having the flexibility to move between one breath pattern and another, one breath technique and another is, uh, you know, is getting it to me. That's, that's uh, a lot of people come in, they've, they've learned a particular style of breathing. And um, I see this like with yoga ujjayi, you know, a time this sort of aspirated, metered sort of breath uh, process where, where people will breathe that way but learn that in yoga and then think that that's the way they should breathe all the time and um, uh, it, it usually falls short in different uh, in different scenarios different environments so mm -hmm. oh you're so correct yeah and I'm constantly having to um, address people who are stress breathing all up in the shoulders I mean you mm -hmm. see everything but you and the staff were so so helpful and guiding through the process because it wasn't just I didn't get it the first try. I mean, it, it took quite a while and took quite a bit of assistance to get the rhythm right and to get the two stroke working properly. Um, so yeah, I mean, we could not I could not have done it without all of you. <laughs> yeah, the the facilitators were fantastic um, and the the pointed mantras uh, I found to be extremely extremely helpful. Yeah. Yeah, and what she's talking about there is we have a, a system of body mapping. Basically, we'll work on areas of the body and say affirmations and and 
uh, that have to do with the emotions that are stored in those bodily areas. And when we find something, uh, it happens all the time, when we find, find a point that needs some work and all of a sudden people have an emotional catharsis over that because uh, that's where we're storing your particular energy. So if, um, you know, given, given your experience now, would you recommend uh, the breathwork week to other people? Most definitely. Oh yeah. You definitely. don't feel you don't feel like you were shortchanged by uh, experiencing not experiencing the medicine. No, not at all. And I was so grateful to be clear-headed throughout the workshops. You know, as opposed to potentially only sleeping for four hours. <laughs> <laughs> or sometimes and, even less. Yeah, but. exactly. So. Um, yeah, I, I would positively uh, recommend the breath work. Um, yes, and, and maybe even over plant. I, I don't know. I, I may come back and do plant medicine because I'm still curious. Mm -hmm. um, but but the breath work was fantastic. I I, I can't say enough. Oh, beautiful. And uh, again, nothing wrong with wanting to come do the plant medicine. That is uh, pretty much a cornerstone of the Rhythmian program here. Uh, and again, if you're able to or you want to and you're, you, um, you don't have any medical conditions, then it's, it's another great tool to use. And uh, I thought uh, that's what was so nice about having you on um, because you actually did have a choice, except that you didn't have a choice in your time slot. <laughs> <laughs> I need a special time for myself. <laughs> Well, great. Well, let's see where we're at. Um, I was going to tune in to some questions here or just see what, uh, what kind of comments are going on and if there is, uh, if there's anything people are saying. As Tim joined in, I'll just go where we left off. Sherry joined us. There's a lot of people. There are five people watching my screen, so you're at 50. Okay, that was back, uh, <laughs> back when we were trying to get started. Paul, Kim, Connor, breathwork like Stanislav Grof. Uh, the breathwork here uh, is similar to that, but different. Grof teaches a thing called uh, holotropic breathing, uh, which um, tends to be a little bit more aggressive, a little bit more, um, know, a little less technical, I'd say, um, from my experience of it, uh, but similar in its, emotional catharsis and its connective properties. So yeah, we teach something that's similar to that here. Uh, you know, Rydney has so many awesome tools and that is, is the case. We had this week, um, we had guest speaker Aura Natrick who was talking on, on mindfulness and, and uh, she has this says who uh, technique that it, um, I don't know, were you in one? any of those classes or, uh, and uh, where you could um, where you can actually get control of your mind when your mind thinks a thought you, you know you go through a checklist of, of ideas uh, or a checklist of, of thoughts to say is this you know do I really need to have this thought do I really want to have this thought you know whose thought is this anyway says who Says, who? says me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't want that thought. I didn't say that I'm a crummy person. <laughs> All right. So what else? Mercedes. Uh, a lot of people. I am Tom Cabal. People who've all been here before. Uh, Dave Power. See you a lot, Victoria. Uh, Candice, do they have breathwork facilitators in the states? Yes, we do. Um, what I'd say for that is if. Um, if you're interested in that, uh, friend me on Facebook, R. Christian Minson. Friend me on Facebook. Send me a, no a note that said you saw this, and we'll we'll take that up from here, uh, or we'll take that up privately. Um, Karen Dorman, Claudia, and uh, that's it. So people are uh, people join. Anybody got questions at all? We're here. We got a little bit of time to to just uh, shoot the breeze, so to speak, if there's anybody that has any questions or otherwise. Uh, Candace is saying thank you. Uh, you're welcome for, for answering that question, I'm assuming. Uh, 
let's see, while we're on, I'll mention that the next breath work week is going to be happening in October, the, the beginning of October, the, the very last couple days, I think it's September 29th or something like that, to October 5th. So um, if this is something that interests you, the Breathwork Week, then uh, call this number up above. I can never do this right, this is backwards, <laughs> but uh, you know, the, People there at the booking office can answer any of your questions about what's going on, whether it's for Breathwork Week or for the normal rhythmic program. Um, let's see, and the others, yeah, you can send your hearts and little thumbs up too. We always like to know that people are, are actually uh, responsive here. <laughs> and, uh, um, let's see, what other things, I guess, um, you head back tomorrow, is that right? Um, back tomorrow. Yeah, were you able to get to the beach while you were here? I did. I made it to the beach once. I might try and slip away again and get on a bicycle. Yeah. Um, and I, I expected that I'd want to go out and do some more excursions, but it, I've been really happy to just stay here. Every time I think I want to do something, there's another opportunity that arises here with the to learn or grow, like today I was going to go to the beach, but instead I'm doing this, and again, an opportunity to practice what I've learned. Mm -hmm. There are no workshops today, and I'm like, hmm, I'm having my private little workshop, That's <laughs> working it. on it. Um, uh, collating what I've learned. Well, I appreciate <laughs> that, and that, you know, um, I've heard that more than once, actually, in these interview sessions, where people, people come on who would never, never think of speaking in public, let alone to thousands of people out there on the airwaves, and, um, uh, you know, it's just a testament, one, to, to the program, and two, to your application of it, that you really uh, did the work, um, you know, and uh, I wanted to get you on here specifically because I saw what, uh, what a positive trajectory you were on all week, so. So with that, let's see, one last thing, uh, no, no, more, no more comments and uh, otherwise, so we're going to just say thank you, Susan, for, for coming on, for being here this week, and uh, thank you, all you out there uh, watching, and uh, like I said, call that number if you have any questions about the Rhythmia program, you're welcome to friend me on Facebook if you do. Just make sure that you send me a note, a message that says where you saw me. Otherwise, uh, you're in danger of not getting uh, friended because lots of lots of people uh, ask to be friends who I have no idea where they're coming from. So with that, uh, again, thank you. Thank you. We'll see you next time. Have a great day.